Hello everyone, it is dead in the middle of February and I gotta be honest, I am exhausted. I've been crazy busy, I'm traveling, driving, paddling, all that stuff. Uh, but it is such a beautiful day, I know that I will regret not getting on the water. So I'm gonna do a short paddle and we're gonna talk about kayak stability. This confuses a lot of people and I hope this straightens some things out. Let's go. I said I am I am pretty tired today but I knew that getting on the water would make me feel better and I already feel better I just think it's super important to paddle any chance you get particularly when you get a warm day like this in February uh, it is 60 something degrees it is one of those days where it's hard to put on the dry suit because the air is so warm but the water is cold so always dress for submersion uh, some places that deal with kayaks and water where you get these sort of temperature issues will use 125 degrees as sort of the magic kayaking is okay number uh, and that is where uh, the water temperature and the air temperature add up to 125 but honestly if it were much warmer I'd be above 125 and this water would still be super dangerous so in general, I say use your best judgment uh, when the water to me is cold, when it makes my brain go, ooh, that's cold, I put on the dry suit without a doubt. But we're actually just gonna do a nice gentle paddle, um, loosen up, get a little, get the body moving a little bit, get some exercise. Uh, that will wake me up and get me ready for all the other stuff I have to do today. It's pretty windy out there, so I think I'm gonna stay in here and just do a nice little paddle up through these rivers and inlets and see what I can see. And at the same time, Let's talk about stability. Okay, so when thinking about stability, I like to think of it in terms of three questions. Uh, question number one, how tippy does the boat feel when I initially get in the water? Or if the boat's floating and I just press down on one side of it, um, how tippy does it feel? Uh, I more often think about it in terms of with me sitting in it because my weight is going to affect the way the boat feels in the water because it's actually going to lower the boat deeper into the water uh, allowing more of the boat to come in contact with the water. Question two, once I have the boat on edge, how hard do I have to work to flip the boat over, right? So right now I'm on a fairly high edge and it feels pretty stable, pretty solid. The third question is, how comfortable am I with the level of tippiness of this boat? Does this boat scare me at all in terms of how tippy it is? What's your general feeling for that tippiness? So that first bit, that how tippy does the boat feel when I first get into it, is what's called primary stability. Um, we generally like boats that have high primary stability. Generally, I'm gonna add an asterisk, I do that a lot. The second, how hard once it's on edge, is called secondary stability. Uh, and secondary stability, as I said, is how hard do I have to work to flip this boat over? Okay, so when we're talking about stability, there are a number of factors that go into what makes a boat feel less stable or more stable. Width plays a factor. A wider boat is more stable than a narrow boat. Um, there's literally just more wetted surface area giving more resistance to the water itself. Hull shape plays a factor. Uh, V-shaped hulls are less stable than flat-bottomed hulls and rounded hulls are in between. And honestly, most kayaks are a combination of the three. This boat is V-shaped at the bow and the stern and rounded in the middle. My old Delta was V-shaped at the bow and the stern and flat in the middle. Chines play a factor. A boat with, with soft chines or rounded sides uh, is less stable than a boat with hard chines. 
Uh, again, that's a, co a contrast of this delta to my old delta. The old one had hard chines, this one has soft chines, rounded chines. And sit on versus sit in plays a factor. A sit on kayak is actually less stable than a sit in kayak because in the sit in, my center of gravity is much lower. My bottom is literally at or below the waterline, whereas if I were paddling a sit on top kayak, my bottom would be several inches, big win, several inches above the water, which would raise the center of gravity and make the boat less stable. Sit on top boat manufacturers counter that by making those boats wider and give them flatter bottoms, which is a great way to counteract that. And then the last factor is you, is your comfort paddling that boat that may be less stable, um, or your comfort with a boat that is inherently less stable. I've talked about this a lot, both in my books and here on the channel, um, about how an unstable kayak is actually a good thing. It gives us more control over the boat and opens up the freedom to do things like edge turns and stuff like that. So I like a boat that is a little bit less stable. A less stable boat will roll through waves a little bit easier than a more stable boat, which will want to stay flat to those waves. Um, but the biggest part there is you and how comfortable you are with sort of the scary bits. The introduction to that boat is going to be a little bit scarier than a more stable boat. But you've got to sort of just embrace that little bit of fear and, uh, and get a feel for what that boat is like. I remember the very first boat that I bought was a Perception Shadow, which was the smaller version of the Eclipse, of really sensational, both were really sensational uh, touring kayaks. Roto-molded plastic, a heavy boat, but man, I loved it. It was very low volume, and being a smaller paddler, it fit me really well. I really loved that boat, but man, was it unstable. Uh, and the first time I got in it, I said, this boat is scary. And, uh, but I had a moment where I was like, you know what though? In six months, it won't be scary. In six months, you'll be used to it. And you'll really be able to take advantage of that. And it only took three months. Okay, that is a quick talk about stability and how it affects your kayak and how you deal with it and what it feels like. Um, the best thing to do is just to get a, a feel for what you like, what you don't like, spend a lot of time in boats you're gonna paddle, and have fun out there. Don't be afraid of an unstable boat. Hey, if this content is working for you, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you on the water.